What's going on guys? My name is Hussein and I subscribe to the belief that understanding uh, a technology allows us to build better software on top of it. And I believe the least understandable technology that, and yet the most popular one is, is Node.js as a runtime. So I spent seven months or so, uh, the better part of 2024 and 2025, uh, just delving into the internals and architecture of Node.js. And I found so much beauty there. So I designed this particular course that I titled Node.js Internals and Architecture to help the engineer look with Node.js with a different perspective in a completely transparent way to write code on top of Node.js and be able to tell exactly what happens behind the scene. Have you ever run Node.js code and you run it once and it produce an output and you run it again and it produce a different output? That is absolutely explainable. You can explain why it happens, but only when you understand the different phases of the event loop. I designed this course to be three major sections. The first section is the node architecture. What is this V8 engine? Why do we need it? What, how does it work? What is the optimizations it does? Compile and to interpret, to be specific, this the JavaScript into executable code. What happens? What is the difference between interpreted code and language and compile language? What is really the, the major difference here? So we talk about that. Talk about V8 in this architecture. Another component, another part of the architecture is the this beautiful library that's called LibUV, which is responsible for pretty much anything I.O. in Node.js. What is it? What are the thread pool that exists in it? How does networking work in, uh, in this library? How do we do I.O.? And the major component of this is literally the event loop. What is this event loop in Node.js? What are the different phases? I have a lecture for every single phase because each phase technically deserve its own lecture. You know, at 30 minutes or so, just discussing how an input from one phase goes to the another phase and how do they, these are linked and why do you, sometimes when I run something, I get the output or flipped. All of this can be explainable once we understand it. Node packages. How do node packages, modules, what is the cost of importing a module? What really happens behind the scene? Understand that just calling fetch or uh, sorry, require module or import module. What's the difference? What really happens behind the scene? And, and, and again, you might not be interested and that's fine. And, and I'm, again, I'm talking about those who, who look at this piece of technology and want to kind of explore what's behind them. That, that's pretty much all my courses are like that. And even when, when you consider taking this course, you'll see me just enjoying the process of exploring what's behind the scene. And it's so amazing how much stuff. What is promises? What's a promise really in Node.js? And, and we watch... We're gonna we're gonna watch how to we distill that, you know, abstraction down to its basic component. It's so beautiful. The package managers, how do we link together? So that's the architecture section. Then we take a magnifier glass for the second section. Node internals. Now let's go deeper in every single major component in Node. How does Node TCP work? How does Node DNS work? What are the internals of Node HTTP? What are the internals of Node HTTPS? And I'm, now let's link every single thing we learned in the previous architecture right here. Now show me what happened in, when, I, when I receive a request from the client as a server, as a Node.js server. What phase get executed? Is it the poll phase? Is it the check phase? Now, what kind of phase 
does the request it get executed in? And why do we care even? Well, we care because any delay in any of these phases because of code you have inserted will delay the next phase. And when you delay the next phase, you are potentially blocking the main J, the, 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 the event loop. And when you block the event loop, you delay a potential IO to the network, which then getting felt by the client or the server. Right? It depends who, where are you looking from. It's absolutely amazing looking at just taking the libuv library and then breaking the thread pool and understanding how it does node DNS. Why, when I listen on a port without a host name, I can connect immediately, but when I listen with a port and a host name, the, the listening gets delayed. I cannot connect immediately. It takes me a while. What's the difference? There is no magic. It's just pure understanding of how DNS linked to socket management, like to how the kernel behave, and it's all explainable. And it feels so good when you understand these kind of things. So I dive into lots of stuff here. I'm looking at the lectures here, it's beautiful. We talk about node HTTP, HTTPS, UDP, uh, uh, node streams, which is a completely new abstraction in node that sits on top of pretty much almost everything that we use in node like a request in the client is what was called a writable stream because it's, it can continue right you can continue to write a request and it take a while because let's say you're uploading a file uh, uh, while a request on the server side is actually a readable stream you know because you keep reading stuff processes thread how do you clusters how to do socket management in Node.js with the cluster module such that you can distribute connections that is that are incoming to Node.js between the different processes. What are the different scheduling policies? What are the different, uh, what's the difference between them? What is the most optimal? What is the limitation currently? And finally, after having complete and deep understanding of the architecture, the internals and the different components, we bring it to the final section, the performance and optimization tips for Node.js. And these are best practices that are in the wild and take best practices always with a grain of salt. Whatever is best practice today may be not in the future, but any best practice, anything that we say in this, in this particular section, I try to link it to a why you will always find it that anything that we mention, this is why. Callbacks are constant because they may block the main loop. And if the main loop, what's the, what's the problem with blocking the main loop? Well, if you block the main loop, then you are delay the poll phase. What's the problem with delaying the poll phase? Then the IO will be delayed. What's the problem with delaying the IO? Well, you're not gonna read from files. You're not gonna write to files. And if you don't write to files, you might cause corruption because someone accepted something, expected something to be written and it's not written yet because you delayed it. Or an IO might be sent and it was not sent, uh, like a request, like right? you're writing to a socket. And it was not sent back to the client or back to the server because of a delay that happens in the loop. So how, how can I get around it? Well, we can schedule it. There's so many tips here we can partition we can partition the com expensive compute we can offload it to a complete thread we can com offload it to a completely different process heck we can do a c++ add-ons in node.js and i'll show how to do that we will if if, if the function is so expensive to be written in javascript we'll write in c++ and we'll compile it and we'll link it back to node and we'll run it and I'll show you even how to debug C++ code from JavaScript. It's so amazing how much you can do with this stuff. I, I had so much fun designing this course. And I hope you enjoy it. Give it a shot. Go to node.husseinnasr.com for a discount coupon. And I hope I see you there.
Thank you so much for all the support. Appreciate you guys. See you in the next one.